28 of A Course of Love, Bearing Witness. Oh, Kim is here, we can begin. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kim. We have our 13. <clears throat> yeah, we have our 13, we can begin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, sweetheart, who would like to start? Oh. Okay. <clears throat> we must bearing witness. We must speak about bearing witness to what you have learned. Mm. As this course bears witness to the truth, thus must your lives bear witness. <clears throat> Lest this too be distorted, it must be discussed. Yeah. <clears throat> this is not a contest. Bearing witness has become a spectator sport, and it is not meant to be thus. How, then, you might ask, is the truth brought to those still living in illusion? Because inner knowing is both individual and collective, both personal and universal. This is the source of all proof. And so you believe coming together to share common testimony validates the proof of inner and collective knowing. You think shared beliefs, a mass, like a congregation around a pulpit, and even believe in a theory of mass that purports that when a certain magnitude of belief occurs, evolutionary steps are brought about. This, however, is not about evolutionary steps. And so a process intent upon bringing the collective to a fever pitch of belief through common testimony is not our aim. He really doesn't want this to become another church. <laughs> exactly. So good, isn't it? Right, who's next? I go. Trust and bearing witness go together. As the validation sought through bearing witness is a symptom of distrust. Few are chosen to breed prophets and the plethora of testimony taking place is brought about by innocence more so than by wisdom. This sharing of personal testimony <clears throat> has reached its scenic and will no longer be as welcomed or appreciated. So even were the intent of this course to bring testimony together in such a way as to cause an evolutionary step, it would not work. Thus, we must concentrate mm. on wisdom, the wisdom of the heart. Mm. There is a trust that goes beyond proof and beyond the need for any witnessing at all. This is the trust of knowing Knowing is of the heart and holds a consistency and certainty that the dawn of innocence does not contain. The dawn of innocence is but a recognition of the most common 
denominator of existence. As such, it is a beginning only, a true dawn that must, as the sun rises, give way to day and the brilliance and clarity of the wisdom we speak. This daytime of your journey is approaching. It is the time for the sun to cut through the mists of dawn. It is the middle of the journey, a time of teaching and of learning both. It is the time of planting and of harvest that comes before the time of rest. It is the time of celebration that comes before the quiet and the settling of the dusk. You would think of this as the, as the time of work being done. This it is but without the drudgery of time spent. It is your time to shine, to be the light to those who live in the dark, live in darkness. <laughs> and yet it is a time of great humility, of wearing the face of Christ for all to see. For here is wisdom gained and shared. Do you not see that any attempt to turn bearing witness into a convincing argument for your point of view, no matter what that point of view may be, makes what you have makes what you have come to know pointless to you as well as those who you can would convince. You think that when you are enlightened enough to know, you're also enlightened enough to know what to do with what you know. While you continue to think of a separation in terms of doing and of knowing, it is obvious this cannot be the case. As the dawn is unrestrained in its bursting forth, so has been your time of innocence. Not so the approach of day as the sun slowly rises and as slowly sets. This is a time of being both guided and restrained. A time of realizing that you can know without knowing what to do. And that this is not a mistake. Many reach the stage and not knowing what to do with what they know begin to doubt their knowing. This is a human response to a knowing that is not human in origin. Mm. Mm. Knowing is alien to you, and that is why you seek validation. Mm. Each validation is seen and felt as a reward a prize, a confirmation that you believe allows your conviction to grow. Because you believe it, this is at first quite true. But now it is no longer the time to rely on conviction that comes from the witnesses 
you find along your way. They serve a limited purpose for a limited time. Now is the time to step beyond the validation that your teachers can give you. When this step is not taken, mm. gatherings of witnesses abound, and what they bear witness to stops short of what they would see. Mm. Mm. We're up to um twenty eight eleven. If anyone is coming a bit after we started, we'll go next. Witnesses are for the mind and fall short of devotion, which is a natural response of those who know and worry not of what to do. This is a difficult stage as you feel obligated and inspired to act and yet awkward in your actions. We have spoken before of the desire to create that may arise as you begin to enter this stage of your journey. This is often compounded by a feeling of wondering what is next as you wait in anticipation for a calling of some kind. So certain are you of an impending challenge to action of some necessary form to be given to what you carry within. Again, as when you feel the need to convince others of your belief, the need to give form to what is beyond form misses the point of what you have gained. You may be asking now, are you saying to do nothing? At the thought of this, you will be aghast, and what is more, bitterly disappointed. Again, as in the beginning, you seek a task to accomplish, forgetting that only you can be accomplished. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, Mark, would you like to read? Thank you. <clears throat> when one thinks there is so much to say, one forgets to listen. Be guided in your going out. Be restrained in what you say. Be attentive in your listening. Where you are, is where you are supposed to be. After following to all changes will be shown to you if you will but be attentive. <clears throat> if you follow the way that is shown to you, all uncertainty will end. Uncertainty is where difficulty lies. Mm -hmm. certainty and ease as surely go together. There are no more decisions for you to make. There is only a call for a dedicated and devoted will, a will dedicated to the present moment, to those who are sent to you and to how you are guided to respond to them. One will be a teacher, 
another student. The difference will be clear if you listen with your heart. Beautiful.
Mm. Isn't that beautiful where he takes us? Mm. It's just we read some of this stuff and at times it doesn't even make sense. And yet we finish reading and we're like taken. Do you guys feel that? Like um, something just takes over and it's, it's this dawning. Mm -hmm. So beautiful and um, so I appreciate this space. We hold together, soaking, soaking in this experience rather than mad discussions about what everything means. Super appreciate that. It does feel like a listening with a heart. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And it just begins to like grow, you know, it's just so subtle, right? If you mm -hmm. feel it, you can't think it, if you feel it, it's so there. And so communicates between us. I feel like we're just this. There's like a connecting that happens. We give it enough space for it to happen. Very beautiful. You guys happy to dive to the next chapter? Mm -hmm. Get a double saturation. I don't know which chapter we're on, my love. 29. Thank you. Yeah, it's usually in the comments, so just always check in. Oh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Attention. To attend is to be present and to be of service. This is the meaning of which we speak when we ask for a commitment to life that requires your attention. It is both a request for focus and readiness and a request for service that can only be given in the present, in the present, by a mind and heart available to the requirements of the present. Mm -hmm. This is the appropriate attitude for the time of tenderness. Oh. As it is an attitude of ministry. Your function cannot be known to you while you shy away from the idea of service. Whether you realize it or not, you associate service with subjugation, particularly the idea of service to a higher will or higher cause. Some of you associated with a lack of free will, a lack of choice, a course that will lead you to subservient statue, stature. Others think of it in the terms of charity and continue to see a difference between what those who would serve and those who would be served. Few of you have as yet integrated this course definition of service into your lives. But now you shall. For you cannot bring the learning you have done here into the engagement with the life and not realize the true meaning of service. Or in contrast, the true meaning of use. Have you read yet? 
Okay. You who have so worried over what to do have both welcomed and feared the idea of some kind of service being required of you. There is no mystery to this, as the idea of service in your society is one of enforced duty, as exemplified by your military service. You have no notion, as did people of the past, of being of service to God. This is a symptom of the reign of the ego and its ability to both aggrandize your notion of yourself and to minimize it. Ooh. To be of service to God is not to be a slave to God, but to attend to God. To give God your attention and your care Mm. Mm. You who would cry, God make use of me, only need to give to God your devotion and your willingness to serve instead of use. Further, you need to let the universe be of service to you rather than trying to use the universe to accomplish your goals. Mm. These adjustments in your attitude towards service will bring about the completion of the cycle of giving and receiving and the beginning of wholeness. Mm. Mm. Would someone else like to read? I need a few more. Okay. This is a true for your own goal of wholeheartedness, as it is for any wider goal of unity, for they are the same goal. Wholeheartedness is unity regained. Mm. You'll return. Mm. Your return to unity is your return to your full power and your ability to be of quite literal service to God and your brothers and sisters. Mm. Mm. Yes, beautiful. Mm. Because once, once you really feel it, once you feel unity, you can only give it and that's the way you sustain it. So it's like a service is just a natural thing. You can't even do anything else. And it mm. doesn't feel like drudgery. It feels more like fun. If God were to speak to you himself and tell you of what means your service would be to him, he would but tell you this. My child, return to me. God has no will apart from yours. Your return to unity is all God seeks for you, for himself and for all his children. The return to unity was my accomplishment and all that is meant by what I have often repeated here. Only you can be accomplished. Mm. Your service is but dedication to this goal. Mm -hmm. I'll read one more. <clears throat> My return to unity accomplished this goal for all, for all are one in me and one in unity. This is why you have no need to concern yourself 
if anything other than this goal. Your realization of this goal's accomplishment is your realization of your divinity, a state unaltered and yet in need of your recognition and return. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? You are read, Cole. Yeah, go. Cool. Thank you. Well, this goal may at first appear to be one of selfish intent and individual gain. It is not. A return to unity is a return to unity. Mm. From within the center, the core of unity, your accomplishment goes out to the world as mine once did. The time of tenderness is the time of your approach to unity. The atonement that is accomplished here is the means of opening the gate to your approach. No one has closed this gate to you, but you by your own hand pulled it shut as you departed your heavenly home. And you do not remember that your own hand can open it once again. It is a gate of illusion, of mist, of clouds before the sun. Your hand is outstretched now and your light is clearing away the mist. The gateway to unity stands before you. An arch of golden light beneath a rainbow vibrant with the colors of life. Life, not death, assures your approach. God himself will guide your entry. Many of you have noticed the consistency with which you have glorified falsely that which you that which you would imitate from creation. In work two, you will find an example of this. For you all know that work and service somehow go together. In many cultures, has work thus been glorified and made to seem as if it is the proper use of life. And yet, as your father's child, your work is as his. Your work is that of creation. Your creation is your service to the world as your father's work is his service to you. As you cannot imagine God toiling, so you should cease to imagine yourself doing thus. Many of you think of life itself as toil. There is much you need to do just to stay alive. And if a thing is required, expected, necessary, your tendency is to rebel against it and to seek for ease in getting it done or ways to avoid doing it at all. Thus have your paper plates and dishwashers taken the ritual from a meal. Your mass manufacturing 
the satisfaction of the handmaid. While this is neither good nor bad, this attitude of life as toil is part of your rebellion against ideas of service. Mm -hmm. You have no time for more than you do now. And you think of service? If you think of it at all as something to be fit in here or there where it is convenient in your busy schedule. It is extremely important for you to realize that God's work takes place outside of time, as do all acts of true service or creation. This is not a readily understandable concept but one that is necessary for you to have faith in. It is essential to your release of the concept of toil and your acceptance of your function here. No matter how busy your schedule it is only a schedule in terms of your perception of it. Your schedule is just another way of saying your life in an alternative view of how you look at your life when seen thus is absolutely necessary. Let's read that again if, if it's a 2913, no matter how busy your schedule, it is only a schedule in terms of your perception of it. Your schedule is just another way of saying your life in an alternative view of how you look at your life and seen thus is absolutely necessary. No wholeness will be possible for you while you look at life in terms of schedules, plans, timetables, or things to get done. No wholeness will be possible for you while you compartment compartmentalize your life into designated pieces, giving yourself time for work and time for leisure in seeing them, not as the same thing. Life is life. Life is. As love is. Mm -hmm. I, I just have to say that, like, just what, it, what I read here is just, it mirrors my life. In every, I'm just always busy. Someone else like to read? I'm just, I'm just worn out. No, sweetheart. Mm. Life is service to God. God is service to life. You are God in life. Well, Thus you are both life and service to life, both God and service to God. All of the vast universe was created the same, to live and to serve life, to be of God and to be of service to God, to be served and to serve, to be provided for and to provide, to have needs met and to meet needs. This circular nature of the universe leaves no one unattended, mm. yet you realize this not. 
The separation but accentuated this matter of functioning mm -hmm. and made of it something difficult and challenging, something to be changed. Mm -hmm. The separation accentuated this matter of this manner of functioning and made of it, as of the rest of creation, something that it is not. The separation accentuated this manner of functioning, but it did not create it. Life exists in service to itself. Mm -hmm. Thus, mm -hmm. this could also be stated thus. Life exists in relationship. Relationship is the interaction within which service occurs. The replacement of the idea of service with the idea of use, <coughs> excuse me, made for the existence of special relationships. The idea of use created all ideas of toil as the only means of having needs met. The idea of use created all notions of distrust, starting with, as we have stated before, your ideas of using the very body you call your home, rather than allowing it to serve you. Hmm. The universe exists in recipro reciprocal. <laughs> reciprocal relationship, well, holy relationship, rather than special relationship. This is the nature of existence. As unity is the nature of existence and cannot be changed and has not changed although you believe it not. It is a joyful relationship, as the nature of relationship is joy. Once you have given up your belief in separation, this will be known to you. The choice to change your belief is before you. Are you not ready to make it? As you once chose separation, you can now choose unity. Not knowing that unity was a choice prevented you from making this choice before now. Now I tell you clearly, the choice is yours. Choose once again.
anyone else would like to read? I'll read. Go. Um, 20.20, 20, 29.20, right? 29.21. Oh, no. Oh, 20. 20. Oh, yeah, that's right. 20. As you make your choice, remember, your choice must be wholehearted, for it is in wholeheartedness that the power of choice exists. A split mind and heart can prevent you from utilizing the power of choice, mm -hmm. but it cannot prevent you from claiming this choice is your own. Choose anew and let the power of heaven come together to seal the rift between your mind and heart mm -hmm. and make you whole once again. Claiming your identity and your power to make choice is an act that comes from an entirely different place than decision-making. Claiming is akin to prayer and is but an asking and asking for true inheritance. You have felt that you need to know for what it is you ask, and yet you cannot know until you inherit. Can you have faith that your true inheritance is what you truly desire, even knowing not exactly what that inheritance is? Can you not follow me in my choice and accept it as your own? You who have so long been afraid to claim your smallest gifts, look again at claiming with the definition I have provided. Claiming is also contrary to how you have perceived of it in the terms of claiming something for your own. You claim not to own or to separate what you have from what, from what another has and then to call it spe special. You claim in order to reclaim for yourself. How can one's talent cause another to be less talented? How can one's service deprive anyone else of the right to serve? No two are alike. I only in God are all the same. Somebody else wants to read? Yeah, I can read. <clears throat> this is the great divide, the separation between the visible and the invisible. The invisible and the divisible. Mm -hmm. Only the reunited with God achieve the state of unity. Only the state of unity exists. Your gifts, your talents, your uniqueness are your service. Can you not look at them thus? 
and can you not come to understand the reciprocal nature of giftedness? That what God has given only needs to be received? That what you have received only needs to be given? In this, in the in this, in this <laughs> invisibleness of God is simply this, and a broken chain of giving and receiving. Thus, is this a definition of unity as well? Mm -hmm. Service is but another way of stating this law of creation this unbroken chain of giving and receiving. All your worry over the future and the past is but worry about the return of gifts given. Mm. <laughs> mm. What gift of opportunity did you not accept in the past? Might you not recognize in the future? What gift of fortune, what chance encounter, what decision might have changed your life? What you have done, what should you have done that you didn't? What might you do in the future if not for your fear of where the direction you choose? might take you? What peace might you know if you realized, truly realized, that all gifts come but once and are forever? Ooh. The past nor the future matter not. All is available in the here and now where giving and occur. No chance to learn or grow is ever missed. It still exists, though not in time. It still exists, but in the present. Mm. Can you replace your attention to the past and future with an attention to the present? <laughs> mm. Mm.
Shall we dive into the next chapter as well, guys? It's just two pages. How mm -hmm. is the feel in the room? Yeah. Seems being present seems like a good one. Yeah, that's a good one, eh? And we start the read again from the top. Welcome, Marie Sattel. Where are you from? I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Great. Welcome. We're in a chapter Thank 30 you. of The Course of Love, the first book, Being Present. If you wanted to follow in, bright, in the reading. All right, guys, who's the first next to read? I'm happy to read and thanks, Andrew. And I jumped. Yep. Awesome. Being present. Mm -hmm. How is being present different than being? Are they not the same thing? Should they not be? And yet, how seldom are you fully present? for your own life, your own self, your own being. If you were fully aware of your own being, you would be oneness, you would be in oneness with your father. Mm. Mm. How can one be distracted from oneself? And yet you are. <laughs> Many go through life searching for self-definition, self-actualization. Where are they as they search? Where is their being? If reaching a particular destination is all that is sought, the journey becomes but the means for getting there. Mm -hmm. yeah. All learning is seen as preparation for the future or for some eventual outcome rather than for your being. <clears throat> you attempt to learn for something other than yourself, for some purpose other than yourself. Thus was service given another route for being separated from the self and your function here. When you learn in order to contribute something to your work and your world, you bypass yourself. Someone else want to have a read?
your learning must take on a new focus. Be like little children and inhale the world around you in order to make it part of yourself. Be like the little children and learn in order to claim your learning for yourself. Learn who you are through each experience rather than learning in order to find out who you are, what your contribution will eventually be. Being in relationship is being present. Being present has nothing to do with time as you think of it. You think of this instruction to be present as an instruction that releases, that relates to time. You think of present time, past time, future time. We have spoken about these modes of keeping time as well. But as the word keeping illustrates, there is nothing about time that can be kept. The only thing real about time is its eternal nature. Universal consciousness is being in relationship to the true self, the known self, and in all its glorious relationship with life. I think you skipped a paracol. Did I? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You are headed towards what might be called universal consciousness, though you will not know it when it is at first achieved. For universal consciousness is knowing self, while you think it is knowing all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing self is knowing all, but this you do not as yet understand. Universal consciousness is being in relationship. It is the true self, the known self, and all in all its glorious relationships with life. All matter is born and dies. All life is forever. The known self realizes this and begins to act in accordance with this knowing. Da -da -da. Anyone else? Happy to go again. Thank you. This world, as you perceive of, it is built around the foundation of fear. A fear that stems from the belief in the of life, in being born into a body and dying to the body. Hmm. The person who knows truly knows. The simplest truth of the identity of the self no longer lives in the dualistic position with God, but in the monistic state with him. The difference is in realizing relationship with the infinite. Mm instead of the finite, with life as opposed to meter. Mm. Wow, it's profound, huh? Mm. This huge difference is easily overlooked and rarely seen as the key that unlocks the door to universal consciousness, being present. Mm -hmm. There is no being 
and no crescent in metta. Ooh. In metta, being must be attached to form. In the sense of time described by the word crescent, there is no infinitude but only a vague concept of now. This is the key concept that I not only knew, but demonstrated. This is the legacy, the inheritance I left to you. Uh -huh. I'll read again. This discourse may seem to have traveled far from worlds of words of love, words promised, and words given in truth. For no love is in infinite in nature. Finite. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read that again. For no love is finite in nature. Love has no beginning and no end. Love is a demonstration and a description of universal consciousness of being in relationship. All relationship is relationship with God, who is love. Mm, my God. It's the whole paragraph, right? Mm. Mm. What the Course is speaking of now, in essence, is gain without loss. You will never be aware of gain without loss while you believe in what is finite in nature. Mm -hmm. The cycle of giving and receiving is thus never complete. And the certainty you seek always waiting for something you do not yet have, some information, some guarantee, some proof or validation. You might think if you are right, you will be successful. If you are successful, you will be secure. If you are good, you will You do not see these ways of thinking as ideas associated with gain and loss, but they are all thinking that is of a, if this, then that. Mm -hmm. Nature is thinking in terms of gain and loss. This is why we have worked to leave thinking behind. This belief in gain and loss is a cornerstone of your system of perception, viewed from a stance of, if this, then that. Mm -hmm. It's the nature of your existence, because you have made it ruler by abandoning the laws of God. The laws of God are laws of love. Within the laws of love, there is no loss, but only gain. Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 I'll let someone else read. 
I can read. Go. Oh. The source of love and its location is your own heart. Think now of the created form, the body. When the heart stops beating, life is seen to be over. Are you thus your heart? Or can you not see that the created form was made in God's own image as was all creation? You are God's image given form as is all creation. We all of us together are the heartbeat of the world. Without unity, we would not be. Without our source, which is God, we would not be. The laws of unity are God's laws and are simple indeed. Giving and receiving are one. And thus, giving and receiving as one is the only way in which God's laws are fulfilled. Since God's laws are the laws that rule the universe, they cannot go unfulfilled. Giving and receiving are thus one in truth. God's laws are generalizable and do not change. And thus the laws of men have not usurped the laws of God. It is only in your perception that the laws of men take precedence over the laws of God. Since, percep since perception arises from the mind, we may now discuss the mind. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow what oh. chapters, guys. Whoa. It's like, the, like magnetic. It just oh. doesn't want us... It just doesn't want us um, want to let us go. Yeah. Very magnetic. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. It just generates this feeling of unity. It just comes like, just comes effortlessly. Mm. Thank you all. Oh, I will you. take this feeling of unity somewhere else. <laughs> Thanks, Chantal. Ciao. Bye, Chantal. Ciao. Yeah. Uh, I love oh. You are God's image, given form, as is all creation. Mm. We, all of us together, are the heartbeat of the world. Without unity, we would not be. Without our source, which is God, we would not be. Hmm. Thank you, beloved. So precious. Mm. Mm. Aristotle, did you get the right time, or, or where did you where did you hear about this? 
on a website okay. uh, that had more groups oh, yes. uh, related to some miracles. Okay. We're, we're just that we started one and a half hours ago, just so you know, for next time if you're coming. Oh, there really? Might be a wrong timing there somewhere. Because yeah, the... I, I sent an email and I got a reply. Um, and I thought that I converted the <laughs> the time. That's well, okay. But just so you know, for next time. Yeah. Oh, sorry for that. Yeah, just that's fine. Just um, just want to make sure that you know. It's nine nine thirty in the UK, for example. There was one at eight thirty Australian Eastern time. Or and that's then seven, eight thirty, mm. and then one thirty Pacific time, a different one, and uh, oh. I I receive a reply because I I sent an email and I got multiple times, uh -huh. and oh. I yeah, okay. So is there another one in Australia that's uh, in three hours? Um, eight thirty. Australia Eastern Time, but the link I think was the same mentioned. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. This is the one that started at one thirty Pacific, or this is the eight thirty Australian Time one. Yeah. Anyone knows about the Pacific times? But I don't know. Well, yeah, it's on. There. It's six yeah. o'clock on the East Coast, so that means it's three o'clock in California. That's almost three already yeah, in California, and yeah. on. Pacific, where I am. Yeah. All right. So in. So just from so now, from minus Pacific one and a half hours, and you'll be right on the time. <laughs> so you guys started an hour and a half ago. Yeah. So what time are you? Are you on Pacific time in Vancouver? Yeah. Okay, so it starts at one thirty. Yeah, but I went to the one that said eight thirty a.m. On Australia Eastern, which should go as two thirty p.m. PST. That's the one that I was thinking. Oh, okay. I'm in I'm in Arizona, so this is two thirty p.m. Oh. That's when it starts. But you being in <laughs> in Pacific time, California time, it's it should 1 be one thirty p.m. when it starts. One thirty, yeah. And okay. and and it's Friday, not Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> this is forever. Oh, it comes a time change when we when we have the time. Oh, yeah. Absolute nightmare to figure it all out. <laughs> but the web the website uh sort of gives you the time where you are. It does. So, so yeah, I don't know. No, it just at least the one that I went, it showed time zones. It didn't convert anything. It just showed. A bunch of um, times over the year. So good. You the now you know. Now you know, and, and we don't have to go on about it. It's perfect. Yeah. I, I, now it's clear for me what time Great. it is. All right, beloveds. <laughs> See you tomorrow. See you. Oh, yeah. We're doing, just for those who don't know, we do a, also a Course of Miracle lesson uh, three hours before now, every morning. In Australia. <laughs> so it's three it's three o'clock three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Good. <laughs> Just in case. As a whole uh, video, it's it's a sad. daily daily lesson. Same link. Hmm? Cause, cause of miracle. Link? Same same link. Okay. One PM. All right, brothers and sisters. Uh, thank you. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye, Alice. I thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Beautiful. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.